Welcome to a how-to part of my channel. This time we're installing the Lineage OS, making it the fourth update to the much appreciated handheld, the Retroid Pocket 2. What I say an update is replacing the actual software with a custom version of Android version 8.1. This is a beta release that may actually scare people away from doing this update yourself to your Retro Pocket 2, but from the stock OS that originally came with, this may be the best option as well for owners still on the 8.1 version 2, providing a 20% less usage of the handheld, giving you that extra bit of RAM for a smoother, quicker feel of the OS, as well as convenient, easy access to simply update it. If you saw my other videos on the Retro Pocket 2, I'm happy to say that I finally got mine fixed. In this video, I will be updating a buddies of mine, a Retro Pocket from stock to lineage. Just to mention that doing this process will actually take away any of the functionality of the Retroid OS. So this will just be using a Android software. So no Retroid OS with this update. So this process is a little bit different from the previous update. So first thing first, let's head to the link that is provided below in the description. And you wanna download both of the custom firmware and the stock firmware. They're kind of big, especially the server downloads and the fastest. It took me around about 40 minutes. So just be, be patient and get those actual WinRAR or zip files downloaded. Within the custom firmware folder and then head into a lineage firmware folder, you will see a text document with two links. One is a USB driver and the other is to download the preloader driver. These are just simple drivers for your Retro Pocket 2 to be recognized more efficiently for your PC. I've not come across any Mac drivers as of yet. So with those downloaded, they will be the first thing to install. So I've got all my folders here that are downloaded. I'm going to head to my USB driver. And this is what you got to do. Head to the necessary file as shown. And right click it and install. There's no exe file to do it. You just got to right click and install. You should get a confirmation like so. So now let's head over to the MT65 folder and install the other drivers that are necessary. So you get a pop up like so. Just give it a double click and it doesn't take too long, and then the necessary files are installed. So the first two steps are out of the way. Now let's head over to the lineage installation actual files, and you will see now there's a SP flash tool, much like the actual tools that were used in the previous updates. So let's give this an open. So just like the other two updates, the, the same process all in one, on the first which is folder, under the lineage packet installation, and you will see it at the bottom there in the SP flash folder. And we head to the next folder and we want to head and find the scatter file. So we go back now in our lineage installation file and we will see within the image folder, you will see the MT65 Android scatter. The next step now is to see that drop down menu. You will see that at the top of those lines, this is a format and download. Format all and download. So you want to make sure that is selected. Then you want to click the download button. As you can see, the little icon on the top left. Now we've got that actually activated. Now we can actually head over to the Retro Pocket itself. So you have your Retro Pocket 2 still off. You don't actually press anything on the actual device. You would just simply plug in the USB at the top like so and this will automatically activate the installation as you can see. So this process does take a while and you see at the bottom of this actual program the process bar. So this actually took me around about 15 minutes to 20 minutes just to install it. So once the process is all done you will see a green tick like so. Now this is the third actual step to actually update this out of the way. So now I'm just getting ready for the next step, which is just finding the right file, which is in lineage and package and finding the lineage folder. So we're not going to do anything with this. I'm just going to get it ready. Now to actually turn on your retro pocket for this next step, you have to unplug the actual cable like so. So then when you turn this on, it takes a bit of a while, but then you'll be welcome into the actual lineage installation screen. So now that we got this loaded up, the next step is to actually plug in the USB back again. And to actually navigate around this menu, you only can use the volume buttons and also the power button. 
So the volume left and the actual plus sign is right and then you just press the power button to activate. So now I head to factory reset and activate wipe data factory reset. This only takes two seconds and then you're back into the installation linear screen. So that's that step out of the way. This is where it comes a bit different to that of the other updates. You want to go to apply update and enter apply from ADB. This is where it connects to your PC and this is where we head over now to the PC to show you what to do now. Now on the PC, head to that lineage install package folder and double click lineage install. This will then transfer the files over and install lineage now onto your retro pocket too. So this will take quite a while. It took me around about 15 minutes or so. So be a bit of patience and then when this is done, you just get it back then into the lineage installation screen. It does like to hover at 47%, but don't be worried about that. And not too long later, then it's all done. So we just have to do the same process again, as because of this installation does not install the Google Play Store, we just have to do it in the same method. So head to the right folder, which is found in the lineage package install, and you should see the Play Store folder. So same process again, head to the apply update, and then apply update through ADB. And this will install Play Store then onto your Retroid Pocket. That doesn't take too long at all, just a fair few seconds, not even a minute. I'm not sure why you have to actually install Play Store this method, because you can't really download and install it any other way at the moment. So now when that is all done and complete, basically that's all the installation files now ready to go. So now we just simply reboot it, and we will now be welcome into the lineage installation part of this now. Upon this first boot up, it does take quite a while, but being sure that this won't happen like this all the time. So now it's getting ready and warming up all the files that is installed. And on the first boot up, it does kind of prompt you with some bit of pop up. So basically, if you just click OK on these, they don't actually pop up again when you actually reboot the system after all this. So here we are now at the welcome screen of installing Lineage. Just click next, actually select your right language. It does kind of spaz out with the aspect ratio. I'm not sure why that is, but just keep clicking next. And it does ask you for the date and time, but you won't have to really do that because you can actually update it when you connect it to the Wi-Fi. So track down your Wi-Fi, hit your code. Just gonna hide my uh, actual retro pocket so you don't see my actual Wi-Fi code. And when that is done, then we go to the next part. Uh, it does see here now if you want the location settings. I'm just going to turn all this off so it actually doesn't use this any these actual apps in the background. So you don't actually use that much RAM anyway. So let's click next. Let's get rid of all these. And to actually use the mouse, you just hold down again the home button, just like every other actual version. And this is what I found quite important is the lineage OS features. You can actually send feedback to the original developers if there's any problems, if it crashes and bugs. So I didn't actually tick this because I just wanted to try and use this um, actual software to this full potential. But I think it's a good actual idea so then they know. On the first boot, it'll actually show to give you a three actual home screen settings to choose from. It is advised to go with the Repolar. This is just people's favorites of the actual layout and it's pretty simple and it's easy to navigate and it's quite actually designed for the Retroid Pocket itself. So here you can actually add your apps and things like this, but this is what you got at the moment. You only got a fair few things, but the first, th first thing you want to do is head to Toolbox because we've still got no Play Store. So we want to enable the Google Apps. So this will actually get your, your Google Apps up and running. And then when that is done, you just click Enable, and then you just reboot again to actually see the actual Play Store icon in your Apps folder. So we're gonna restart this, and let's head back now. Definitely boots up a lot quicker this time around. So now it's actually starting up again, and when you first head to your app's actual folder, let's just give this a couple of seconds to boot up. Here we are. So I'm gonna to navigate to my app section, and now you will see the Google Play Store, so you can sign in and download those Android apps. 
like Dig, which is a great front end, which a lot of people are using anyway. So it's a bit of a shame that you can't actually use the Retroid OS that was in the original games. Oh yeah, and that pops up on your first time around, but don't be worried about that, just click OK and it won't happen again. So we don't actually have much going on at the moment, we've just got the Google Play Store, a bit of the controller settings and the actual home screen themes. So because of all the stock apps that were available in the previous versions, this is how we actually do that and get this ready now with all the original stock apps. So on the PC, head to your lineage and installation folder and then you will see stock apps folder. And then there, you got another one. And then open that one and then drag that content over into your retro pocket system storage to actually connect it i just actually just plugged in the usb into the micro c and then on the retro pocket i just dragged down the top menu and then selected the usb connectivity and then just like the transfer files so it just popped it straight in my pc so i'm gonna drag these contents and then simply just head to the system storage and drag that all in So now back to the retro pocket itself, you want to go to that file app, but you won't actually see your eternal storage until you actually activate the settings. So with the actual touch mouse mode, you want to head to and to the top right and show internal storage. Then you can go to the top left and navigate to the actual internal storage and all the folder and files are there. So there's my stock apps folder and there's my APK files. So these are all the installation apps that were originally in the other versions. So you can actually do this one by one and just choose which ones you actually used in the past or ones that you preferred. My favorites, of course, is using the Dig front end. So that's a really good display. I've also been making a custom one, uh, which I'll actually show you towards the end of the video. And also you need RetroArch to get the emulators going and then just kind of choose which ones you like to use. So set it up as you like. And then you'll just to confirm good to go. you guys that this is running the lineage. If you actually head to your settings, actually at the bottom of the screen, Then under settings, head to system, and then you can see your actual version that you're running. So it actually notices it as a retro pocket OS now. So when you connect this to the PC, it does pop up with the right name. And then you will see lineage OS 15.1. There you can actually download and install the update. No, not too sure what these updates are because this is quite new to me, but this is very much more of a simple way just to update. So this is why I kind of like this version of OS because it's simply to, uh, to update after installation and you can actually send feedback to the actual original developers. So as I did state, this won't actually improve any emulation. It just kind of makes the OS run a lot bit smoother. So I did find with Dig, it just kind of opens up a bit quicker. Apps a little quicker to actually install as well. And you're also navigating around with the actual games on Dig. It's just more responsive. So it was a nice welcoming update. And I can't wait to see now what updates this will actually bring. When it comes to actually bugs, it's kind of almost the same bugs that I've experienced with the Android 8.1 version 2. Sometimes the actual aspect ratio would kind of mess up a bit in Dig, but that was easily fixed by just changing the theme back and that never really popped up again. When you activate the actual mouse or the touch screen navigation bit, basically that actual cursor does move a bit slow. So I recommend just going to the settings and speeding that up a bit. Well, there's also a couple of things that do need iron out, but this is an actual beta form. And I, th I think if we all just kind of stick with one OS and send feedback, I think this will actually be a great direction to go. So I've been using this now about a week, and this is using a modified version of 8.1 version 2 update that we had a while back. I am quite late to the party on this actual lineage installation, and we have had another update. But the same bugs are still kind of there that I had in my original 8.1 version 2. But I have to say it's definitely more responsive and a bit quicker. And I think if it's using seven, if you're using 20% less of actual resources, you may actually get a bit more battery life. But I can't really confirm that yet as I actually haven't really tested that as much as you possibly can. So overall, I do believe I'm getting a better experience now with the Retro Pocket 2. It's doing more than I want, and it's, it's very quite stable. Just those little things that do need iron out. Now, if you all jump on board and send our feedbacks, so we can actually get a nice stable OS, and perhaps we can use the same one then to our later handhelds that will be coming out in the near future, the Retro Pocket 3. 
So as always guys, if this video actually helped you, hit that like button and you want to support this channel, click subscribe, leave your comments below and I'll catch you a lot on the next video.